to listen to um, all the presentations this morning. And so, so with the Scratchpad software, you know, I'm, I'm certainly interested in all of what you're saying as to how I can help. Um, in terms of the software that I'm involved with making here at the Natural History Museum. So they, there you can see on uh, the first slide there, uh, and you can see that all right, is that just to check again, sorry? You yeah, can, you can good, see the, the first cool. slide, okay. Is that all right, sorry? Yeah, it looks, it looks good to me, Rob. Yeah, okay, lovely, that's it. Thank you, sorry, beg pardon. Yes, yeah, so those are my contact details. On the, on the first slide there um, at the Natural History Museum. And so, yeah, I'm going to cover an outline, an overview of, of, of scratch pads and um, about me and uh, what a scratch pad is and uh, where, where we'd like to go in the future in, in terms of moving the platform forward. So I've only been at the museum for a couple of months. I joined in on the 20th of September as a research software engineer uh, within the Biodiversity Informatics Group, and I work with Vince Smith and Ben Scott, uh, among other people. And yeah, I joined, um, I was hired to look after scratch pads. I mean, there'd be other things I'm involved with, like the barcode of life as well, which I know was mentioned in the uh, earlier presentation this morning, but uh, certainly a big part of my role is scratch pads, uh, as it is now and working on its future. Um, it's based on a technology called Drupal, um, which is open source software, meaning that it's free. You can actually see how the software works. Everything's up there on this place called GitHub, where you can see all the code. So you can download the software and, and throw up a Scratchpad site yourself, or you can get the museum to host it. And I'm really enthusi enthusiastic about community um, in terms of software communities as well. Um, and I'm been involved in things with like Drupal platform, the technology platform uh, to help other people learn it, for me to learn things about it, to collaborate and things like that. Um, so these are the couple of links of, of me online there uh, on that About Me page, where I am on Drupal and the Stack Exchange site is like a, a techie site, um, gives you a lot of places where I, I ask questions and answers on the Stack Exchange site. Um, some of it's related to to the stuff that we're doing technically with scratch pads. So what is a scratch pad? This is something for me that I'm learning as well. So this is a, um, coming here today is, is great for me as part of my learning. So I'm, I'm learning it and I'm finding that it's, it's lots of things to lots of different people. And you know I'll, I'll show a few examples of that, including what the dip tourists are using uh, that I'm aware of. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, as I understand it, it's a virtual, virtual research and publishing platform, um, which um, you know we have an account on. You, you have a Scratchpad site, and you can collaborate well with other people on on that site. Uh, and as I said, it's open source, so you know it's not proprietary. It's not it's not it's not got a license or any lock in, and the content is there displayed on the site and. Um, there are ways that you can edit that content. It's your content. It's your site. Drupal itself is is um is very modular and flexible, um, and it's a it's quite a good candidate for this kind of um, area that, that that it serves. And you know the key thing about scratch pads is the taxonomic uh, element of it, which I've seen in in previous um, presentations this morning. And it's, it's quite old software, but Drupal itself has moved further along than where Scratchpads is. Um, but it's a testament really to how good the software has been, that, it's, that it was so long ago in 2007 that it's, it was started. And now here we are, 14 years, can you believe it, that, we're, that, we've, that this has is, this is carried on. Um, so yeah, here's a quote here, uh, linking together evolutionary data by developing analytical tools and proper documentation, and then using that as a framework to conduct comparative analysis studies of the evolutionary process and diversity analysis. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, a major community goal of, of, of scratch pads. So these are the key areas. You've got four areas here um, that, that are variations of using the taxa, conservation projects, regions and societies. So each, 
these scratch pads will cover one or more of these four main areas in, in their um, logging and, and tracking of tax, taxonomy. So what's been looked at is, is similar platforms. Um, as you can see, there are six there. Um, and you know what we don't want to do is reinvent the wheel. There's a there's a term called proudly uh, proudly invented elsewhere, or found elsewhere. Um, you know they they act, they they provide similar kind of things, access to data, um, and various management processes for that data as well. Um, <clears throat> but we found that a lot of these are very hard to maintain. I suppose that could be said of scratch pads in terms of the technology it is now, but but. What that tells us is that other other technologies have got challenges as well. So there's not necessarily a motivation to, to move to want to something else um, if if, there's, if there are similar challenges. And they also lack flexibility and modularity. And scratch pads is made up of lots of Lego bricks um, modules, they call them. Um, and you know we've, we found that they're they're not finished and there's um, are lacking in terms of, although there's an overlap with what scratch pads does, um, the the overlap is not great enough to, for us to say, well, we could um, we could go and use those. And there's also the challenge of migrating the data. So there's a lot of data in scratch pads, and it's certainly possible because it's an open system. But it's it's the thinking of that as well. And what if your system you're going to is is not complete? And you're migrating data how does that data end up do you lose some of the structure um, some need to be hosted by yourself we can do that with scratch pads so you're gonna um, but you can also have us host it as we do on my on the sites um, that, that end in myspecies.info but if you do host it yourself you, you you've got to have the the, the know-how to do it it can be done I mean certainly with scratch pads you can do it but you can also use the services at the museum and some aren't open source, and you know I'm, I'm a big fan of open source, and that basically means that the software out there is is available for everyone to look inside and see how it works and collaborate on it and contribute. And I think it's got lots of benefits in lots of ways, and a lot of uh, stuff out there in the world is um, based on open source, and it's you know it's um, you can develop a business model around it. You can develop a plan around it. It doesn't mean it's not so secure because actually having the ability for everyone to collaborate actually can make it better software. If, if you if you're closed software, you're limiting the the, the scope and the um, opportunity that people can collaborate, which I'll come on to a little bit later about how people can help. So uh, there's a caveat here with this this uh, slide. It says how many people are using it. it was the last survey that we did majorly was in 2018 before my time gives you a bit of um, information about about how uh, and, and how much scratch pads is being used and how much data uh, and and, that, and certainly I think we still have that uh, around about that figure of, of um, sites of about 743 scratch pad sites individual scratch pad sites um, I, I, from, from what I've looked at recently for example so there's still a lot of usage um, going on, even though that that's that data is a little bit uh, older, a few years ago. Um, and this again, this is this is sort of from the same data set and showing a lot of people all around the world using it. Um, I myself have met um, someone called Carlos who was who's based in Finland. Uh, he, he's using scratch pads, um, and I, I'm I'm going to hopefully get to know a lot more people. Um, but that's that's a, a snapshot of, of where it has been used and probably. You know, there may well be still people around the world in some of those places that are still using it, um, but we'd need to confirm that with a, a new survey, which I'm sure I will discover as we go along. Um, and this this sums up the the kind of um, data that we that we have um, scratch pads being used for. Uh, I mean, some of this I'll say is a newcomer. I, it's stuff that I'm still learning about and what it actually means. Um, but from yourselves, from your perspective, you may understand a bit more um, um, about it and certainly um, feel free to ask questions about it. So this is a bit of a small diagram probably looks like um, in terms of um, the largest scratch pad sites, a little bit hard to see on my side but it just gives you an idea of, of that there are varying sizes of, of uh, scratch pad sites um, 
and so these are some of the uh, of those the top most ones um, that are the largest. Uh, so we've got about uh, eight there, um, top eight of, of uh, people using scratch pads for all sorts of things. Uh, so you know it can hold photographs. You can see it's got there's one with acoustic data, so it can hold multimedia recordings. You know uh, audio recordings, for example, of, of various organisms. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's it's can hold different sorts of media. And this is close to home. Um, you may know others, but here's a couple of examples of Diptera scratch pad examples here, um, showing you uh, the general kind of things that you can do with galleries and, and taxonomy. Um, yeah, if you know others, please let us know. I'd like to know. Um, I've I've done some research uh, with my colleagues to find out, you know, how you're using them. Um, so moving on, where are we going next with scratch pads? Um, so we've already put the sites behind the firewalls. I mean, security, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, um, you don't want to, to, to have to worry about uh, as users and, and shouldn't need to know about. So, you know, when it's, when it's working really well, you don't know it's, it's going on. Um, and so that's been going on. Um, and my colleague, Ben Scott, has done a lot of work on that. So there's a, a list of uh, issues uh, on the GitHub which is a website uh, where the code is open source. There's a, a list of issues. So let's get, so for me, that's the idea is to get that down to resolve issues. If there are really old issues, see if they're still a problem. If they're not, they've been fixed or, or somehow we've, they've been overcome. I can update the tickets. And I'm, I'm also got some issues that I've fixed recently that I've got lined up to release. Um, and better communication with the community. So by me coming here today, uh, I hope is um, is helping with that to to engage with people who are using it. Um, and then we've got an overall uh, uh, overarching scratchpad.org site as a as a gateway um, to actually make that improve upon that and uh, update that as well. And this is just a few couple of things that we've been doing in terms of uh, technical side of, of scratch pads that may may or may not mean a lot to yourselves. Um, but it's just stuff that we're always looking to embrace new technology. And these are a couple of technology systems that, that help um, with maintainability and overall us to be able to provide a better service. So longer term, this is this is um, what really excites me as well. Is, is thinking about where we'd like to go in the future. Um, and I think what's important with that is that we take you with us, you know, and that we that you're happy with where we're going. Um, I certainly want to keep the functionality um, that you that you're that you enjoy using, um, but also make it possible for us to roll out fixes, your ideas, improvements quicker. Um, and so a lot of things going on under this under the bonnet. Um, and looking at different ways in which we can do things and also innovating with new ideas, like I was saying, uh, new ideas like micro publication, data aggregation. And then, you know, all of that can, can strengthen a case for the funding of it, the, the, the money that comes in to actually um, fund me and, and, and anyone else who works in a museum um, to keep it going, that actually it stays relevant and there's some novel things that, that we're doing. So just to sort of give you a flavour of some things, there's a couple of technical diagrams here. The way I see scratch pads from what I've seen is you've got lots of individual sites and you've got users of them. And then this is a this is a, a diagram that builds upon that. <laughs> it's it's um uh it's it's quite a bit different there and the and the, and the um the things that are in sort of like a, a yellowy colour, uh, a, a deep yellow goldy colour, if you like, are the new things. Um, and basically what this diagram is saying is that I don't worry too much about the details here, but is that we want to keep all of the scratch pads as they are, but provide new ways in which you can access them, um, which also helps us um, work out ways to, to actually keep the same experience that you get and, and does what it does now. But under the bonnet, things are different in terms of, and that helps us um, embrace new ways of doing things. Because as, as I've said in the early slides, it's 2007 is when when this started and in terms of software and technology things have changed quite a lot with the version of 
software that we have scratch pads on it's called Drupal 7 uh, we're now on nearly on Drupal 10 and a lot of lots of change since then but we're also looking at other platforms we're looking at Living Atlas National Biodiversity Network those platforms as well as 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 ways to actually achieve what what we want to do in terms of scratch pads but what's important to us is as we have learned from the other platforms that I mentioned um, in a few slides back those six other platforms we found they were lacking in terms of functionality so it's very important that we keep what what scratch pads scratch pads has got now and and um, but but uh, try and move forward so there's a lot of challenges there so those key goals like I say work like it does now different under the bonnet but still works like it does now uh, being different under the bonnet means that we can do things that are more secure and reliable we've had some issues recently uh, in the last few weeks um, with with scratch pads and so what we want to do is embrace new tech to help us you know keep those to a minimum but also as well is do new and innovative things um, linked open data market publishing some of these things I don't know quite yet what they are but I can see with linked open data um, being able to link different data sets maybe foster more collaboration between individual scratch pad sites so that's the that's a sort of a, a flavor of the future so as I said at the beginning is, is um, with open source being an open source platform these are the places you can get help um, you can email me you can raise an issue on the github issue list at that address and um, with Zoe's suggestion of Padlets, I've created a Padlet as well, if you'd like to collaborate on there. And um, uh, if, if the slides are made available, you, you've got my contact, rob.davis at nhm.ac.uk as well. Those are the places you can get help from. And certainly I, I want to be very responsive and be able to help you on those uh, via those plat um, communication channels. Um, so the next thing is how. So there's one. So to say that where you can get help is how. How can you help? Um, so yeah, help us build a case for further funding. So um, send us examples of how scratch pads have helped your community, and that could then demonstrate to other people how um, that they they could use it, and that could contribute to um, building a case for further funding. Um, by all means, that being open source, uh, donate technical experience to fix bugs and guide other users feel free to go on github and do that i'm here to to, to certainly do a lot of that as well um, and you know opportunities to support maintenance and development of the scratch pad system you know um, going back to the funding case as well um, but yeah report and document bugs which really is is basically going on, uh, on the github and and reporting things or but also via these communication uh, channels as well on the github there but also via the email address there as well um, thank you for your time so uh, really